Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video, guys, I want to talk to you about the straight and narrow path or following the masses. Um, before I go into the depth of this video, I know I've been producing a couple here lately that has just been nagging at me for a long time. A lot of you have asked questions, got them finished. The you know pre-tribulation rapture, it's a coward's hope. Um, you know, I also want to do that one about that prepping's not fear mongering, but this one here. It's just straight for me to address a lot of people that you always have these questions that when I start serving the Most High, I'm like instantly separated from my family and from my friends and from, well, really everybody I know. And that is exactly true. Um, breaks for impact, okay? But don't let that stop you, okay? And that's the whole thing I want to get across in this video. Um, I guess to start out with, a friend of mine uh, online, he has a ministry website. Um, you can check it out. I totally encourage you to check it out. ScripturalSabbath.com. Put a link to it in the video description below. Is the, you know, in short, uh, speaking with the brother, is that the masses, he had it on his website. It's a great thought. Um, he had a great thought on it. Is that the masses, you know, everybody's always like, well, everybody else is doing this. When, if you're a prepper, number one, first and foremost, you ought to know that that is already a wrong statement. Because most of the world out here is not prepping. And hey, be glad. Because if everybody was buying beans and bullets, dude, you'd never have nothing to put back on the shelf, okay? Because it'd all be gone all the time. All right. The masses, if you look at it, let's just say a fourth of the world is Christian. A fourth of the world is Islamic. A fourth of the world is non-believing or, you know, Hindu, whatever, you name it. And then another fourth is just out there. They're the fringe, I guess you could say, you know. Everybody is doing something. You know, there's, uh, even within the Christian community, you have the Sabbath day on the Roman calendar. They keep the seventh day on the Roman calendar. Or they keep the first day of the week as most of the Christian. Uh, you know, and then there's those of us who actually keep the commandment seventh day on the Creator's appointed calendar. Um, and you can find out more about that right there if you've never heard about the Creator's calendar. There is so many people out there in the world that everybody has religion. Everybody has something they do. and It makes them feel good. It makes them feel like I'm not a worthless person anymore. Well, I don't need feeling. What I need is fact. What I need is real. I want something solid that when I lay my head on the pillow at night and I don't wake up tomorrow, it's going to be all right. When you ask me these questions, you guys ask me these questions, you know, what do I do? Well, what you do is continue on the path that the Most High has laid out for you. You don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Because now, if you look from the start of the cover of the Bible to the end of the Scripture, there has always been those that have been severed from the wicked to live. Okay? Be glad that we are being severed away from the wicked. All right? Because you look at Abraham. He was brought out of his own country, out of his own people, and made a great nation. But he had to be severed off from that. All right? You can't follow the masses and hope for salvation. You can't follow the masses and hope to live when stuff hits the fan one day. You can't follow the masses and make it through the trumpets. Just saying. All right? Because um, if you do, you already have a mark. So what profit to you even if you did survive the trumpets? You're still going to the flames of Gehenna whenever it's done. Just saying. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out. So don't be discouraged. I, I, I feel like I'm, I just beat that to death all the time. Like, don't be discouraged. But you know what? When I started prepping, I was by myself. All I had was my wife's support and myself. That's really it. Um, I found a lot of the people that, you know, keep the Creator's calendar. I found them through Facebook, and then we got to meet face-to-face. -face. Uh, some of those people are actually... You know, we got together and started Loud Cry Ministries as it is today. And, you know, you have to start somewhere. And the problem is that somewhere is a very small walk path, just like Messiah said it would be. You know, the, the, the gate to everlasting life 
It's very small, okay? You know, it's like you want to take a dial caliper or micrometer and it's like ten thousandths of an inch compared to a million inches, okay? Very small. You need to stay right on it, okay? And most of the world, dude, they are so content. You know, most people, the masses of the world, most of them are content to live and die the life that they have. Period. They, they have no interest in eternal salvation. They have no interest in eternal life. They have no interest in what the world is to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate the world that we live in right now. I don't hate Master, I don't hate Master Yahweh. Uh, you know, I, I don't hate uh, Him for creating this world. It, it's not mankind. And, you know, our own lust for power and Satan coupled together is the reason that this world is in the shape that it's in right now. It's our fault and Lucifer's, not the most high. He gave us something beautiful, we wrecked it. I'm glad that his son will be overseeing the next one, you know, because it'll be a much better place. And you won't have to worry about the masses there because all flesh will worship the Most High there. So it's a good idea in the New Kingdom to do what the masses does, but not in this one right now. All right. So for you that are prepping, you know, just as I was saying, the brother that's got the wonderful ministry, you know, and, and he was just nailing that out one day. It's like, if you look at the bullet points, like I said earlier, the masses, Christianity, you know, the masses... Or it follow Islam, the masses worship this day. You know all these people, because he he was detailing it out how the, you know those that keep the Creator's point times a very small group. But just looking at it from prepping too, is everybody. If you label out the masses in each compartmentalized group, it leaves you if you're actually trying to prep for what is to come in a very, very, very small facet, and that's how it's going to be. Um, there's no change in that. You're not going to find what you need in denominational Christianity. You're not going to find it at the mosque. Uh, you're not going to find it at the temple. All right. You're going to find it in the scripture, and you're going to find it prepping on your shelf and getting your family ready and writing these things on your heart. It's the only place you're going to find it, and, and the most high, obviously. And I don't know what to tell you to ease that that burden because there there's no easing it. And um, that's one thing that I guess that's one thing I always just try to deter away from whenever we talk about these things because you all want an answer. And the only answer is, is just you're going to have to hold your head up high and keep walking the path. And uh, the mass is the world. It breaks my heart because people all the time, you know, I guess I get chided bad about that I'm like, I tell people, tell people, and then one day they want to come take my stuff. Would you really shoot them? Please don't ask me that, you know, because I'm going to tell you. And it comes down the nitty gritty. Luke's gonna do what Luke's got to do. All right, and um, you've got to protect your family, people. And uh, and you know I don't feel bad about that. Israel had to protect themselves many times. Scripture shows plenty of times people's had to protect themselves. I don't feel bad about that at all. Listen, you ain't you're gonna bend over backwards and uh, uh, you know just let somebody run you over, come in your house, take your goods, rape your wife, kill your kid. No, you're not, unless you're an idiot and a coward, just like I said in that video the other day about pre-tribulation rapture believers, cowards. Um, you know, everybody's going to have to do what they got to do to get through this. I encourage you to keep the scripture and don't break commandments to make things through, okay? But be, live within reason and don't do as the masses because the masses are going to do anything they need to do later down the road to get by. Hence why they're going to show up your doorstep to kill you. I guess the last thing I would say to this, and for those that ask, this is, this is for you that ask, what should I do? When the Spirit speaks to you, just like it spoke to me in Babylon Incorporated, you know, and let me be very, very careful with when I say this, when the Spirit, I have never at any time heard the voice of the Most High in my entire life. But I will tell you this, every time I've ever needed to actuate and do something, I've felt a fire inside, and I knew I needed to move upon it. If I didn't, I was grieving the raw cockadish. Now, that's how it's worked in my life. People say, you know, the Most High speaks to them. I guess he speaks to all of us in different ways. That's how it's always been with me. So when you feel that inside, and you're sitting there, and you've asked your preacher, you've asked your minister, well, now this is what the scripture says, but, you know, you're saying this, and they say dismiss this, or don't worry about this, or you just do this. If it isn't written, you know, if he what he's saying ain't written, you're in the wrong spot. And the problem is you're going to figure out real quick. It's just like all these Joel Osteens of the world and these T.D. Jakes and all that. That it's like self-help service. You know, they make you feel good. But at the end of the day, all they're feeding you is garbage. They ain't feeding you salvation. And you won't find that 
in the mega church where the big massive offer plate has to be passed around to pay for the big massive bill instead of helping feed the hungry and the homeless, the destitute, poor, and the widow. Um, and I could go on and on about that all day. But that, you'll never find that in that. So you're going to have to get away from the masses, and that means severing ties with your former, you know, worship uh, group. You know, people that you went to fellowship with. I hate it that it's that way, people. I hate it having to leave where I went to church all my life. But you know what? If I had to throw away my entire family, you know, if, if the most high today, I stood right in front of him today and he said, Luke, it's going to be like this. You're going to have to cut off your entire family. You're going to have to just sever ties with all of them because they're not going to follow me, okay? But you're going to have to just sever ties with them, friends, everything, but you get eternal life. Dude, I'd be like, done you know it's that simple to me um, it's you need to keep it that simple because when you get so enveloped and entied and entangled with the world and everyone else in it that you can't let go dude you ain't worthy of the most high at that point anyway because Messiah said plainly right there you can check that verse right there that you know if you if father and mother all these other people are more important than me then you ain't worthy of me so don't worry about the masses I just can't I can't stress that enough and the worst one, like I said, trying to answer that to you, is cutting ties with your fellowship group. Ladies and gentlemen, I've cut ties uh, with the people I worshiped with. I went to a Seventh Day um, Baptist Church for a while on the Seventh Day of the Roman calendar. Uh, figured out there's still stuff missing. Went to SDA Church for a while. Studied Roman Catholicism for a while because everybody's saying, hey, Rome's the beast, so I got to studying that. Found out for sure, yep, <laughs> changing times and laws, Daniel 7:25, bunch of other stuff. Yep, definitely the beast power, number one. So... Uh, you know, I, I went from point A to B to C to D to E to G to finally get back to point A where that, hey, I just need the most high and I don't need to worry about all this uh, denominationalism and fellowshipping with the masses and all this. All I need is the most high and his workers. Listen, in the garden, uh, did Adam and Eve have a big church house to go to? No. They didn't go to the high place. Uh, you know, did Abraham have some word of worship? At, you know what I'm saying? It's it, the... the, the point where that connects with the most high is right here right here and you don't need the masses for that you don't need the masses for what you need to do inside of prep you know what I'm saying it's good to have fellow like-minded people with you to pray up laws took me years to find good people that I trust in my life but um, that's just where it stands and that's that's the best way I can put it to you just keep the faith so until we see you again here at seven trumpets prepper channel I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.